Hey, once again, welcome. Um, Happy New Year. Great to have you here in this first service of 2018. We're starting this year with a short series called Get Set for a Great 2018. And um, <clears throat> the idea of Get Set is simply this position that you take between on your marks and go. All right, when you, if there's an athlete who, who, who comes to the line at the on the mark stage before go, you need to get set. And if you get set well, you will have a great go. But if you don't have a good get set, you're probably going to have a false start or at least a bad start. And so we're just looking at a few things over these next few weeks that will help you and I and us to get set well before we go into all that is there for us this year. Are you ready? On your marks. All right, you got it. Let's have a look at what it means. And today we're going to look at at the word consecration as the sort of positioning of what it, uh, what it takes to get ourselves set well. Now, you might say, Wolfie, what is consecration? I haven't read that on Facebook lately. I didn't hear that word in the news lately. Well, we're going to unpack that word. But if you will get this right, if you will understand what this Bible word consecration means, and if you will just understand it, the idea of it, and you will commit yourself to it, then you are going to set yourself up for a great 2018. So will you lean in and say, I want to learn something about consecration today. So um, this, 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 this idea of consecration. Now, we're going to find it through an example in the book of Joshua. Joshua is an Old Testament book and an Old Testament uh, leader. And we're going to look at him very briefly in Joshua chapter 3. We look at him as an example and what it means and why we would do it and when we would do this consecration thing. And then we're going to switch over to the book of Romans, one of the books in the New Testament, and we're just going to look at Romans chapter 12 and look at what it looks like for us. Because how many know, it's one thing to know about a thing, it's another thing to see how do you do it, right? And if we can know what it means and why and how we can do it and then, and, and then commit ourselves to it, amazing things can happen. So are you ready? Let's turn to Joshua chapter 3 and have a look at this, him as an example for what consecration could look like. How are you and your Bible doing at the beginning of this year? You bored with your Bible? All right, you're still into your, you got one? You know where the Bible is? All right. In your phone somewhere? One of those apps? Hey, don't put your app in one of those like places where you have to go jump three times to get to the Bible. Or put it right in the middle, right at the top. All right, get into the faith book before you get into the Facebook. Uh, ouch! Because right, there's life in it. And here we go, Joshua chapter three, verse one. It says this. It says this. Early in the morning. That's a good time to read the Bible, right? Early in the morning. All right. First thing, get 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 into. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out, and they went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. Say, before crossing over. There is something you need to do before you cross over, and if you do that well, man, amazing things can happen. So the story is this. Joshua is one of those 12 spies that, that were sent out to look at the promised land. And, um, and he was one of the guys that looked at it and said, man, this is God's promise. Let's go for it. The rest of them said, or the other 10, 10 of them said, no, we can't do this. There are too many giants in the land. And that caused Joshua to have to wander through the wilderness for at least 40 years, plus a few extra before he gets to this point. And he's now at the point leading God's people. And he looks over to the Jordan, over the Jordan. He's ready to step over. But he says, before we go, we've got to do something. We've got to get set well before we go. And then he says this. He says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. So he's looking at what he's He's, he's seen it 40 years before he saw something. He saw the promise. Now it's taken him 40 years and he's, he's got to the very edge of it. Some of you feel like right on the edge of the promise. You think like, it must, it's going to happen this year for me. And he stands at the edge. And then, but everybody just wants to rush over and he says, stop. He says, before we go over, we consecrate ourselves. Because tomorrow, 
the Lord will do amazing, or some translations say wonderful things among us. Don't rush over the river. Tell that to your neighbor. Just tell him, don't rush over the river. Before you cross over, friend, if you can understand what this idea was that, that Joshua was, was trying to, this, this habit that he was trying to get, get them to, to, um, to, to have, if you can understand that, amazing things can happen. Right? Often we have hopes, we have dreams, but we don't have the habits to make them real. Uh-huh. Have hopes without habits are never going to materialize into anything. We have some habits in our every nation family. We have some habits. We have habits of annually fasting the sort of second week of the year. We have five days of prayer and fasting where we all get involved in different ways across the world, where we consecrate ourselves. We, we have this habit of saying, before we cross over into the next, let's consecrate ourselves. We're going to understand what that means in a moment. But this is a habit. We have different habits. You might have habits with your Bible. You might have habits of coming together on a Sunday to worship together, habits of going to a connect group where you, where you do life with some people. You might have some habits, hopefully, that you're intentionally growing your spiritual life because if you don't grow it, it's just going to fade away. Faith can come, but it can also go. All right, your faith can grow this year, but you need to put some habits in place so that it can grow this year. So let's have a think about what this, so, so the key here is, is, is consecrate yourself because tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. What does the word um, consecrate mean? It basically means this, to dedicate or separate to a divine purpose. Okay, big, big bunch of words, but that's what it means. It basically means to take something or yourself and to dedicate it to separate it from all this, from, from whatever it's attached to, to separate it and to dedicate it to a divine purpose. To say, here I am, God, for you. This is for you. Um, I am for you, and, and I dedicate myself to that. I devote myself. Throughout the New Testament, we see this idea of devotion. The church started with devoting themselves um, to the Lord, which, which means to commit yourself to something in a way that will enable you to go through some stuff, even if you're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Not to be this sidetracked this way and that way, but something happens when you dedicate, when you devote yourself to, to, to be able to go through some stuff. And how many know you need to go through some stuff to get through some, to some stuff? Some of you want to get to some stuff, but you're not willing. You haven't devoted yourself. You haven't done the consecration, but that gives you the strength to get through some stuff. So he it says this idea of, of committing yourself, dedicating yourself to a divine purpose. Um, and let me just be straight with you, unless you, in case you feel like um, this is a, a, an easy deal. God, what does God want from you? What does God want from you? Here's, here's the news, and it's not bad news, it's good news. He wants everything from you and I and us. Right? When he says, devote yourself to divine power, he's saying, trust me with everything. This is what faith is, isn't it? This is what trust is. Trust is really the leaning of your whole human personality in full confidence on God's goodness, ability, and wisdom. It's not like this, you know. Oh, God's there, but, you know, I don't really need him. It's just a little. No, this is, this is what it is. This is what devotion does. This is leaning everything on him. Jesus doesn't say, look, come, if you want to follow me, just give me a Sunday, give me a bit of time, give me a week, a year. No, he says, I want all of you. Whoever wants to follow me, let him take and her take up their cross and Follow me. If you, anyone wants to find their life, they will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, if you give it all to me, you will find it. What will it profit someone to, to gain the whole world yet lose their life? This is the high calling of God. It's a, it's a big price to pay. Would you agree? Love the Lord with some of your heart. All of your heart. Hey, but here's the good news, man. The deal is a great deal. It's like all of you for all of him. That's awesome, isn't it? You see, so I, I was speaking to a guy a few months ago in another nation, and he came, and we were talking about the cost, and he said, you know what, Bof, I don't get it. I mean, what if I had a million-dollar business, you know, 
and, uh, and, and, and God, does God want all of that? I said, you just don't know this God you're talking about. Your little million-dollar business that you're supposed to dedicate to God. I mean, he, he's a God who's got a billion, billion, trillion, zillion business, and he's coming into partnership with you. All of your miserable million for his amazing everything. Never forget that it's a great deal. When you give your all to him, you get his all for you. That is an amazing deal. Give your miserable life to him. <laughs> give your miserable money to him. Commit yourself to him and amazing things happen. This is what it means. We're going to look at Ephesians this, this week. This is what the theme in Christ means. When you step into Christ, you get all his spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the deal. I've often said that when Ali and I got married, you know, you have that moment when you, when you say, um, with all my, all my earthly possessions I give to you, what's yours is mine, and the congregation sniggered when I said those vows because I did not have much. But Ali said I had potential. <laughs> Listen, God sees potential in you, friend. You don't have much to offer him. When you say, it's not like, hey, God, I'm giving you all of me. No, listen, you got nothing to give him for in, 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 in relation to what he's got for you. Make that deal this, week, this year. The, 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 the reason this is important is you will not do this consecration thing unless you know what you're stepping into. Some of us are afraid to give him everything because we're not sure if he will really come through for us. We're going to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, and we're going to read that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And some of you are going to say, yeah, but not for me. And you won't give your all to him unless you realize that he's got his all for you. And in his wisdom, in his goodness, in his power, he will let you, he will, he will deliver those into you in my life. But let's have a look at, at when do we need to consecrate ourselves, okay? Two times, really, the, the thing about consecration is, is, number one, you consecrate yourself today in order to leave yesterday behind. To draw a line in the sand. The reason you do this, they did this consecration thing before they rushed over the river is because they'd just been through the wilderness for 40 years, and guess what? A lot had happened in those years. And sometimes our faith can be formed by the wilderness, and consecration is that moment where you just got to recalibrate so that your faith isn't formed by the wilderness, but by the Word again. See, I've been through the wilderness, man. My body has been riddled with arthritis for, what is it now? I don't want to give my age away, but it's like 35 years I've had pain in my body every single day. A kind of, some type of arthritic pain. Am I going to let those 35 years of pain shape my faith for this year? Or will I just recalibrate and say, God, you are my healer. You are the, my strength of my life. Am I going to, this is why I need consecration. This is why I need those moments of not just rushing on, but just stopping and saying, man, I'm not going to let the past shape my future. I'm going to recalibrate. I'm going to, and then this is where Romans 12, when we get to Romans 12, it says, be transformed by renewing of your mind. We need to stop so our minds are renewed, <laughs> that we put off the old so we can put on the new. I'm here to tell you, do not let your past experience shape, what your future, future, shape your future expectation. Amen? Just amen. I don't like saying amen, really, just as a word. But it's, it's, I want you to agree with that. I agree with that. So the first thing you do, the reason you consecrate is because you've just been through some stuff. Who's been through some stuff in 2017? Some stuff that could really shape you. Shape you, shape you that you do not anymore trust God. You say, God, I tried. Come on, God, I was faithful. I tried, I gave, I came, I served, but that but needs to change. You're going to find a but in Ephesians chapter 2. But God. Uh -huh. You meant but life may have happened in 2017, but let but God happen in 2018. Okay, this is why one reason you need consecration, because you need to stop and make sure you leave that stuff behind. As I've said many times, often our future problems, our greatest challenge are not what lies ahead of us, but what the stuff we've been through behind us. 
We've allowed that to shape us rather than God's word. So number one, you consecrate because you've got stuff to leave behind. Number two, you consecrate because you've got expectation for good to come. Notice that it says over there, tomorrow the Lord will do what? Amazing or wonderful things among you. How many of you had some amazing food over Christmas? Right, we use the word amazing for all sorts of stuff, but this word amazing or wonderful is a special word. It really means this idea of amazing being unexpected. And it also means that which you could not anticipate or you could not do in your own strength. You see, we, we consecrate ourselves because we have hope for tomorrow. We have expectation for tomorrow. We, dedicate, we consecrate ourselves today in expectation for the amazing in, and preparation for the amazing things God will do tomorrow. What God has promised, we, we, we once again, we, we receive that promise, we, we recalibrate to it, and we say, I, can't, I stop before I rush over, I stop. I remember what God said about that promised land. Because how many of you know, they might have been through the wildernesses, but they were about to go into some stuff as well. What did they, anyone tell me what they discovered? What did they walk into when they crossed over? Jericho was a little problem, right? Anyone else? Anything else in that land? A couple of giants? Come on, Malachites, Amorites, all the other ites? I mean, there was a lot of ish. They needed some, guess what? They needed faith to walk into that promised land. That's why they needed to consecrate, pause, stop, say, God, what did you say again? It's been 40 years since I heard that Moses tell us about this and heard your promise through his prophecy. Remind us again. Okay. Get it. Now let's go. This is get set before go. Have you got it? So two reasons, because we need to leave the past and we want to enter, enter the future. And, and uh, it, it draws that line. You know, some of you just need to move your foot right now. Just draw the line somewhere and say, man, I'm leaving some stuff behind. All right, I'm, I'm moving into the next. I'm, I'm expecting the, the wonderful. Joshua would have to go into that land and he would say in Joshua 24, he said he had to get to a place at the point and say, you know what, you guys can serve who you want to serve. I mean, everybody choose who you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Okay, this is part of consecration. Now, he, because he consecrated himself, when he faced the giants and we faced the difficulties, he could say, I am trusting God. Me and my house, we will serve God despite. We will trust in his goodness, in his power, and in his wisdom. All things will work together for good for us because we love God. This is, this is the power of being in Christ. So now I've, talked to you, I've told you what it is, when we should do it. Let's have a look quickly at how we should do it. How can we do it? What does the New Testament say about us, show us about how we, what, what could consecration look like for us? Now we have a few habits in the house. As I say, we fast, we devote ourselves, we come to worship services, we have we have all sorts of routines. Uh, by the way, one of our habits here is not to just rush into what did God say to us for 2018, but to get set well. That's why on the 28th of January, we'll have our Vision Focus Sunday. As the elders and the leaders, we've been praying about what, what is the Spirit of God saying to us as a church this year? What is the focus? And we're excited about what God is saying, but we don't want to rush into that. We want to get set well before we go. And this is why we do this. Um, but let's go to Romans chapter 12. Oops, just help me here. This is not operational. Okay, so there are a couple of things. This is, so Joshua chapter 3 is consecrate yourself. He has the, he has the New Testament um, sort of what that looks like for us. Romans is, the, is an incredible book. 11 chapters of, of amazing. This is all God did in Christ. Okay, if you want to, we're going to learn about in Christ through the book of Ephesians but this week. But um, these are amazing chapters. I could, I could take you on a journey through that now. But, but it gets to the practical, the application part of it in Romans chapter 12. And this is what he says. So here's what I want you to do, brothers and sisters. God helping you. 
Take your everyday, ordinary life, your, actually, you know what, I don't want to start here. Can we just, 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 I want you to go into your Bibles to, to another translation. This is the message translation, and I want to make a point with that. But can we just go to Romans chapter 12 in a regular translation? Okay, just keep that up there. Therefore, whenever you read the word therefore in the Bible, you must say, well, it's because of. So you always go to think, why, why is he saying this? This is because of all God has done, all the great gospel that he's just explained. Because of what God has done, he says, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, I ask you, I, I instruct you, I um, beseech you that you should present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So here in the message translation, we read what that might look like. It says, so if you say, well, what does dedicating and separating myself and my stuff to God for divine purposes, what does that look like? Well, here it is. Here's what I want you to do, Paul says. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. Anyone got one of those? Anyone feel pretty ordinary, average? You know, I haven't got lots. What I have is little. It seems insignificant. But Paul says, hey, hey, don't look down on that. He says, take, take your stuff, your bodies. And when he says your body, it's not just this thing that hurts when, it pinch it, when you pinch it. It's, it's, it's everything you have, your, material, your life here. He says, take this life, God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. He says, this is what consecration looks like. Take your life and everything in it. Take your job. Take your sport. Take your hobbies. Take your social media. Take your health. Take your money. Take your possessions and place them before God as an offering. And remember what the deal is. All of yours for all of His. But when this happens, something amazing happens. Now, he says, why? on what basis can you do that? He says, because of the sure mercies of God. He says, I urge you, because of God's great mercies, that he's just explained in 11 chapters of the book of Romans, do this because of that. Now, God's mercies is a, is a term that just tells you how God really feels and what he's done for you. How many know that God... He's crazy about you. Do you. How do you feel that God feels about you? You know, you're going to read the book of Ephesians, and you're going to see right at the beginning of chapter 1 that, it, that, that Paul writes, and he says, you know, from the very foundations of the world, God chose you, and he set his love upon you. He created this whole world because he had you in mind. He wanted you to, his love to show up in your life, and he wanted to bless you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And then sin came along, and it destroyed that and separated you from that. And, and, but Jesus came, and, and he overcame. And I pray that you will have, your eyes will be open to see what God did in Christ when he overcame, and he raised him up far above everything else. And then he says again in chapter 2, But you were dead in your sin, but God made you alive because of his rich mercy and great love which he lavished on you. He made you alive in Christ. And Paul's basically saying, because God did that, come on, give your life to him and trust him with everything. And then he goes on to say this, And then you will test or approve or show what is the will of God, the perfect pleasing and good will of God. You know, you and I, let, let's believe this, that, that you and I are most fulfilled when we are fulfilling God's, wo God's will in our lives. Do you believe that? You and I are most fulfilled when we are fulfilling God's will in our lives. So as we look at this, I want to simply ask us as we wind this down. We've looked at what consecration is. We've looked at what it does. We looked at what it looks like. We've understood that actually what God asks of us is everything of us, and He promises in exchange everything of Him. And the question I guess we just got to ask is, will we do it? 
Will you take your ordinary life? Will you take everything you have, everything you are, all your hopes and dreams and ambitions and say, God, I trust you with them this year? And then will you trust him that he will do amazing things among you? And this is what you need to do this week, and I need to do, and we need to do. We can say, God, will we trust you? Will, you give you, will we give you our all? And will we recognize, man, we haven't got much to give him. Most of us have got a mess to give him. Give him your mess. And see what wonderful things he will do in exchange.